At the beginning of World War II, Italy had quite a powerful navy. However, it wasn't powerful enough to take control of the Mediterranean Sea away from Great Britain. Starting from the 1920s, when the fascists came to power, Rome wanted to take back the Mare Nostrum, having ruled it 2,000 years prior. However, London clearly asserted who the leading power of the Mediterranean was at that time, with the havoc wreaked by 20 English torpedo bombers in November 1940. The Italians understood that they couldn't beat the British Navy out in the open, so they devised a plan for a covert war. What we have here is a two-man submersible submarine that was designed by the Italians and used in the Second World War. This uh, submersible submarine um, is a, an open submarine that uh, is used for attacking ships that are tied alongside in their home ports, i.e. their own harbours. It wasn't a brand new idea. At the end of World War I, the Italians developed and successfully employed a human torpedo. Two frogmen could covertly approach an enemy ship while controlling a torpedo apparatus. They detached the charge, transported in the torpedo bow, and suspended it under the ship's bottom on a tow line between bilge keels. They set the detonation time using a simple clock. In the mid-1930s, Italian forces renewed their interest in human torpedoes. Mussolini thought of this as the super weapon that was capable of destroying the British Navy, which threatened the Duce's imperial ambitions. In 1935, the Italians designed an experimental prototype based on the 533mm torpedo used by their navy. That same year, in the mouth of the Serchio River, between La Spezia and Livorno, the Italians established a secret guided torpedo training base where the assault fleet frogmen could master the super weapon. The first torpedo prototypes were extremely hard to control and broke down often. That's why the Italian sailors nicknamed the apparatus a maiali, a pig. The guidance system for this is all wires, uh, so it's very difficult to steer. It's even more difficult to steer once the charges have gone because you've got no, uh, no, no bow as such to help you steer the uh, chariot in the same place. When this was in use, many times this would be abandoned anyway and the divers would be left to their own devices to, to find their own way back to the ship where they came from. Model SLC, Siluro Alente Corsa, slow-running torpedo, 1940. Its length, including the warhead, was 7.3 meters. Width of the apparatus was slightly more than half of a meter. Height at the protection plate level, one meter. Weight, including the warhead, 1,588 kilograms. Weight of the warhead at the earlier design stage was 220 kilograms. At the later stages, 250 or 350 kilograms. Power plant, one electric motor, 1.6 horsepower. Power supply, a storage battery. Operating voltage, 60 volts. Maximum speed, up to three knots. Submergence depth, up to 30 meters. Cruising range, up to 15 miles. Crew, two people. In 1943, Italian engineers designed a new guided torpedo model and called it Siluro San Bartolomeo, the St. Bartholomew torpedo. The cockpit is open to water, so the divers will be wearing a uh, full diving gear, uh, which is their diving tanks, their masks, and, and, and all the tubes that go with it. So as you can imagine, it's not very comfortable, and it can be quite awkward to, um, to travel around in that way. Model SSB 1943. Length, 6.8 meters. Width, 0.8 meters. Height, 1 meter. Weight, including the warhead, 2,200 kilograms. The carrier could be equipped with either a single 300 or 400 kilogram warhead, 
or two consecutively loaded warheads at 180 or 200 kilograms each. Power plant, one electric motor, 7.5 horsepower, supplied with a storage battery. Operating voltage, 60 volts. Maximum speed, four knots. Operating submergence depth, up to 30 meters. Crew, two people. On June the 10th, 1940, Italy joined World War II on Germany's side. At the same time, the Italian Navy officially adopted the SLC guided torpedo, and they immediately started their drills at the secret base in the mouth of the Sergio River for sabotage missions against the British Navy located in the Mediterranean Sea. In 1940-41, fleet frogmen on the SLC guided torpedoes executed eight raids on the main British naval bases in Gibraltar, Malta and Alexandria. Most of the missions failed, but the Italians persistently mastered the combat application and equipment of their guided torpedoes. The levers and the controls in here, apart from the steering controls, we have uh, valves which uh, control the air in the ballast tanks, again to assist the depth of the, the uh, underwater submersible. The whole contraption is more like a fairground ride than it is a, a serious war machine. But you know, in uh, 1942, 1943, when this was used, um, they were prepared to try anything and they would uh, launch these at, in the dead of night um, and then they would go into harbours to cause as much damage as they possibly could. At the end of 1941, the Axis launched another offensive on the English ships. The naval situation was more than just satisfactory. Owing to the successful actions of the German submarines, there were only two battleships left in the British Mediterranean fleet, Queen Elizabeth and Valiant. Both ships were located in the Alexandria port. On December the 14th, submarine Shearer, carrying three SLC guided torpedoes and 10 frogmen, left the secluded Porto Lago Bay on Liros Island and set sail towards Alexandria. On the fourth day of sailing, soon after sunset, the submarine reached its destination point, one and a half miles from the Alexandria trading port. On December the 18th, 1941, around midnight, a commando team set off for a mission on three guided torpedoes. They were approaching the harbor entrance semi-submerged. The entrance was blocked by a steel net that could become a serious threat to the mission. But Fortuna smiled upon the frogmen. The English had removed the barriers to let their destroyers into the base. The Italians seized the moment and entered the harbor together with the destroyers. The teams separated once they'd entered the harbor. The mines were planted on Queen Elizabeth precisely as planned. The commandos fixed a tow line on the bilge keels and set up a charge exactly under the keel. The mines were also planted on tanker Sagona without any issues. But the crew that were mining battleship Valiant encountered some difficulties. Within a few meters of the ship, the breathing apparatus of one of the commandos failed, forcing him to surface. Then their torpedo died in the water and sank due to a technical failure. Lieutenant Luigi de la Pena trawled the torpedo all by himself and left it under the bottom of the battleship, close to the magazine of the first turret. In the morning of December the 19th, three explosions blasted in the Alexandria port. That's how six commandos on three guided torpedoes managed to shift the naval balance in the Mediterranean Sea in favor of the Italians. However, not for long. The Italians tried to keep their super weapon a secret, but the British successfully procured several of the human torpedoes. In August 1943, the guided torpedo fleet executed their last successful mission using the Maiali. Italy capitulated several weeks later, and all its military secrets fell into the hands of the Allies. <laughs>